Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we do a full walk around of the 2024 range of Jayco camper trailers. More specifically, the Jayco Swan, but this will apply generally to all the 2024 range of Jayco camper trailers. It's real exciting, so come along as we show you what it's all about. Now it's worth noting at this point that the new olive green colour primarily applies to the Outback range. If we head over to Jayco's website, you can actually see here that the Outback is in the new olive green colour, but the Touring remains pretty much as it was last year in the grey colour scheme, the rounded nose and all those bits and pieces. But a lot of the updates do carry through. If you go down through their website, you can go down to a really handy feature, which is View All Specs and Features. And if you click on that tab, it brings up a spreadsheet which shows you the standard, optional and non-available features for that specific model you're looking at. So in the case of the Swan, you have the Outback and the Touring models and it runs you through all the standard features, inclusions and options you can get with your Jayco camper trailers. Now before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Jayco Newcastle who has given us access to this Jayco Swan to do a full walk around review on. If you don't know JK Newcastle, they're a multi-award winning dealer up here in Heatherbray, just outside of Newcastle, right off the Pacific Highway. They're located at One Canfield Drive and they accommodate a site that's over five acres. And you have pretty much everything here that you might need, including an awesome spare parts and caravan and camper trailer accessories side to the dealership and all the models on display. So you can go through and have a look at whatever you need and also get all your caravans and camp trailers serviced here as well. For me, it's really, really handy as it's literally three minutes down the road. But let's go through what this is all about. A few of the changes that have come along with the 2024 model range, as well as a number of updates that have happened over the last couple of years. We'll cover all of them as part of this video as we do a full walk around, starting with the camper all packed down. So let's pack it down and I'll run you through the changes externally with the body, particularly the front, the color, everything like that. So you know exactly what's happening and then we'll pop it back up and we'll run through all the interior and all the other little bits and bobs that go in to make the 2024 range of Jayco camper trailers. So let's get into it. And now that we've got the camper down, the big news is the bold colour on the side and the whole new approach to the front end. So let's firstly run through the colour and then we'll touch on everything that's happening up here on the front as well as the rear. So this colour was debuted at one of the shows late last year and there was a lot of conversation about whether or not it was going to be an optional colour, a special edition or what was going on. Well, as it turns out, this is the new colour for 2024 and I must say I'm actually really growing to like it. When you see it in person, it looks fantastic. There's all new decals down the side of it. On the rear, we've got a much flatter profile. The checker plate we typically see on the side now runs down along the rear to incorporate the tail lights, the winding mechanism, the power input on the other side. But most importantly, there's these new heavy duty corner guards that are on all four corners that provide that little bit of extra protection over the old plastic profile units that used to sit on the front and rear of these camper trailers. 
Now these tail lights now align the camper trailers with the update to the caravans last year and I think they look really, really good. It's a nice modern look that replaces the round units that have been on the caravans and camper trailers for many, many, many years. They've got a smoke look so they all blend in when they're off and I think it's a real tidy modern look. The spare remains mounted to the body rather than the bumper and of course on the Outback models you do get this heavy duty bumper as opposed to the touring models. And then on the other side you've got your smoke tail lights here, your number plate up above and down below you've got your 15 amp mains input both where the plug goes in right here and also the RCDs on the other side which is very much like all the Jayco caravans. And now let's move to the front end where there's been a lot of changes and I'm sure a lot of you are curious about what has occurred here. Well firstly the profile nose and integrated boot is no longer. There's now a bit of a squared up look where the checker plate continues around and onto the entire front section. In front of that we have a toolbox and then the gas bottles have been moved externally and sit alongside the jerry can holder. Now interestingly with all this sort of movement around, the body is roughly the same length. The front end is sort of a little bit different but the travel length remains at around just over 5.4 metres. The advantage here is that we now have a nice robust front end to the camper trailer. Now this updated front now works in really well with the roof profile that was updated back in 2022. So those that are savvy will note that the corner caps are no longer and the roof profile now curves down and meets the front. You now have a sail track that's bolted onto it and these slimmer profiles that run down over the corners and wrap down around along the front. Now let's get onto the toolbox because I think that's really, really interesting. So from a functionality standpoint, we now have this aluminium toolbox that sits on the front of the drawbar. It measures 1800 long, it's 450 millimetres deep and 500 millimetres high. So it's of a decent size. It's got these two compression locks on the top. So the lid lifts up, you've got gas struts on either side and a divider in through the middle. So that means you can store some of your dirty gear in the front without having to worry about sort of climbing down, particularly when the bed ends are out, down into the boot section that used to sit on the old camper trailers. Now the one thing I think you will need to manage is how you stack things in this height so that they're easily accessible and arranged in some kind of orderly manner so things don't pile up on top of each other. But even though this seems like a bit of a compromise, you're now getting a lot more storage space, especially with these gas cylinders relocated to the outside of the camper trailer. Where you used to only have this sort of volume in the old boot style, you now have double the space because of this storage box. So I think once people get into using this, it'll be extremely handy. Now while we're up here, obviously the gas bottles are now externally mounted on the front of the camper. Now there's actually a convenience factor with this in that if you do need to replace the gas bottle, it's really easy to take on and off as opposed to the old system where you had to drag it out from inside of the integrated boot. Standard you get one bottle, but you can obviously option up to the second bottle which would sit here. And then you've got the jerry can holder which is generally on the front of all these camp trailers and caravans. Now you've got the drawbar tap here. Now as standard, this runs off mains only. If you option in the hot water, you'll get the 12 volt pump, which means you can run this tap off your onboard tanks. That's a really handy feature because you'll use this a lot when you're out camping to wash your hands, clean your feet and all that sort of thing. The other handy thing is that they still come with a 12 pin plug, which is good because that's what most new vehicles are fitted with, but you get this red Anderson as well. Now this Anderson runs directly to the fridge. So if your vehicle is correctly set up to run an Anderson, it'll power the fridge while you're in transit, which means you've got a really good source of power to that fridge inside to keep everything nice and cool while you're traveling along. Now the interesting thing is the extra length you get on the front of these camper trailers. The standard drawbar on the older design was roughly about 800 long, which meant it was quite hard to mount additional things such as bike racks and stuff like that. Now while you might necessarily want to do that, the drawbar on this model is now 1500 long. Now that does open up some solutions such as what we've done with our journey with a bike rack that sits over the top of the toolbox, or in our case we've got gas bottles. So I think there's some opportunity there to actually maximize the real estate on the front of these new camper trailers to get it working really, really well for you. Now, if we move to the side, you've still got this great storage area down under the lounge, particularly in the Jayco Swan. If you go the smaller Lark, I think it's interesting you actually get a hatch on both sides. So you've got a nice long tunnel boot, similar to what some of the journeys have, but 
this is actually quite good. Now the one point of difference here is that all your tools to wind up the camper and bits and pieces like that are now located in this section, which again frees up that front toolbox area so you can customise it to suit your particular needs. Now I was curious when I first saw this if this hatch might have moved forward a little bit, but at the end of the day you still got your lifting mechanism that sits down through this section of the camper. So this hatch stays exactly in the same spot as all the previous versions and its operation is still pretty much the same. The only point of difference is that you now have your jack in here and all your tools to wind the camper up, including the legs and stuff like that. But it's a real handy space to store stuff away, particularly bits and pieces that you don't want to necessarily have out in the elements. Now you'll notice through this review that this is a fairly standard Jayco Swan Outback as you would get off the showroom floor. One thing that has been optioned into this is our Fiamma F45S awning as opposed to not having an awning at all or the bag awning that Jayco offer. The bag awning obviously takes a lot longer to set up, however you can fully enclose that with the optional annex. The F45S is really quick and easy to roll out and back in and you can semi enclose it with all your shade walls and stuff like that anyhow. So now let's set the camper trailer up and we can run through all the other bits and pieces. For those of you who are new to the Jayco camper trailers, these are dead easy to set up. You simply unclip the four corners, wind it up, slide the beds out, put the supports up and you're ready to go. You can do it in under five minutes and it's really, really easy. One of the big changes are the slides that the beds go on. They've been updated a few years ago and I was really, really surprised at how easy it is to get the beds in and out now with no dramas at all. So just check out how easy these roll in and out now. It's like you could pretty much do it with one finger, literally. And now that we're all set back up again, you'll notice a lot hasn't really changed from all the previous models that we know and love so much. The general layout of the canvas is pretty much exactly the same. The vinyl skirt that runs along the bottom is the same. The one thing that has been updated to go with this new colour scheme is they now have a khaki canvas that goes for the colouring of the tent portion of the camp trailer itself. Now I wasn't quite sure on this when I first saw the pre-production models that had the camo on it, but I'm really loving the khaki. It's a really nice fresh colour that they've introduced on these, that once you see it in person, it really pops and it has a really nice casual feel about it. And I've actually been really surprised about all the positive reactions to this colour on all the Facebook groups and stuff like that. A lot of people actually really like this colour. It's quite a change from the grey that we've had for a number of years, but I think it does give that really cool, fresh new look to the whole range. Not only of these Jayco camper trailers, but a number of the Outback and all-terrain models of caravans as well. So I think this is actually quite a good thing. Now before we go inside, there's a lot of stuff that remains the same with just a few tweaks here and there, which I think is quite cool. You still have your 240 volt outlet here, so you can run your fridge, your TV, and all of that from the outside of the camper trailer. You've got your 12 volt outlet here, which is a DC style cigarette lighter plug. All your clearance lights and everything all the same, your latches, all those bits and bobs. And the one thing that I do think is interesting is the drop down table, it doesn't have the key locks anymore, which I don't think you really need on this anyway. You just got these simple little push tabs and you drop it down and it's ready to go. So to me, that's a real simple feature. As you know, we've got the one key system on our Jayco journey. And the one thing we haven't been able to key is actually the locks on the drop down table. So now it's a case of just popping it up, which means you can pack up, go on your merry way. And you don't have to worry about securing this into place. It does it all for you when you click it back up. And it's just these little touches and improvements that I like that continually improve the models as you go through all the years. Now, another update that came in a few years ago, along with the revised roof, is that the bed ends now have this really nice finished panel underneath them. So no longer do you have the exposed plywood, it's this really nice finished panel that just gives that more polished look. Another thing you'll notice is that the bed end support poles, where they go into the underside of the bed ends themselves, they now have protection plates. Now this previously was something that the aftermarket looked after, but it's now standard on all the camper trailers, which I think is pretty cool. And then if we move up the front while we're talking about all the bed ends, you'll notice that because we have this storage box and the gas bottles in front of that, that the pins for the bed supports have moved a lot further forward. So they're on a more vertical sort of rise now than what you had previously where they came up on the similar angle to what you have at the rear. Now from a functionality point of view, that makes no difference. The beds still have the 350 kilo load rating, which is great. That is fantastic really. And in a way it probably makes them a little bit more stable, but that's just a little thing I've noticed while I've been walking around the camper trailer. This is all moved forward. You just need to be aware if you're putting anything aftermarket on the front of these campers, that everything is slightly different, including these pin locations, but they're pretty much straight under the gas bottles. So to me, 
it's pretty good if you need to put anything forward or back or if you're changing things around, that's actually a fairly good location. Now another update that's happened over the last couple of years is you now have an Anderson plug so you can plug in an external solar panel. You can option solar panels onto any of these camper trailers, but the fact that you can then plug in an external solar panel, say if you're parked in a shady area and you just need to get a panel off to the side, you can plug this in and charge your battery and supplement the solar that's coming from your roof. It's unregulated, meaning you don't need to connect it with a regulator on your solar panel. You simply plug the solar panel directly into the camper and the BMS takes care of all the charging requirements from inside. Here you've got your vents for the fridge inside and if you do option a camper trailer up with a hot water system, it will sit in here as well as the external shower. They all get placed on this section of the wall. But there's been one fairly significant update over all the previous models, which again makes life a lot easier and we'll have a look at that just down here. So no longer do you have the coast to coast water filler assembly on the side here. A few years ago they updated the whole system along with all the caravans so that your inputs are underneath. I'll quickly show you that before we head over to the other side. So the water filler points are now on the underside of the camp trailers and caravans themselves. You have your mains input here so you can connect up your hose and run everything off your mains pressure if you're on a service site. And then you have your tank inputs here. Now if you order these camp trailers as standard they typically come with one tank but you can option it with a second tank as well and there's a diverting valve so you can swap everything around so you drain from your front tank or your rear tank which helps to balance the weight out as well. But this is a lot easier this system, it's a lot more tidy, it's got a stone guard and everything built into it here and it makes it a lot easier to fill your tanks as opposed to the old coast to coast store that we used to deal with just up here. Now one other recent change which I think is really really good is that these drop down steps are pretty much the same, just the same heavy duty galvanised two step that you get on the Outback models but they now have this grippy textured surface on the treads themselves. Anyone that has the older model knows that these can get quite slippery and the aftermarket industry like caravan mods have come up with clip on stair treads that you can actually put onto the steps so that they're a little bit easier to get up and down particularly when it's wet and when you've got little ones. But they're now standard with the grip treads which I think is a great thing but now let's head inside and check out the interior. Now the entry door remains unchanged, it's pretty much exactly the same, you've just got the new colour on the faceplate here, you simply click it, open up, head inside and you can latch it back to the van like so and there's no dramas at all. Now let's head inside and check out the interior, for anyone that's seen the JK Camp trailers before you'll be very familiar with what you see inside, there's been a few little subtle changes over the years but generally the layouts, the finishes and everything like that remains the same, which to me is a really good thing but let's go and check out a few little minor tweaks here and there and the general layout if you're looking to buy one of these camper trailers yourself, the space you get inside these camper trailers is amazing. And you'll notice through the years they've actually rationalised all the layouts, so they're configured roughly the same as this. But as far as the layout inside the Swan goes, you have a nice long bench here, you've got your fridge, you've got your sink, you've got your stove, a microwave down here and this really handy robe where you can either store your clothes up and down or a lot of us will actually fit shelves in there so you can stack some storage containers in there with all your clothes and bits and bobs and stuff like that. Off to the side here you have your dinette, you've got your buffet storage right at the front door which is a great source of storage in the Swan and down the rear you have a really comfortable double bed. Now up the front we have our queen bed and this lounge area and it's probably one of my most favourite things of the camper trailers. It creates a secondary seating area so that if you are all in here and it's raining outside which does happen from time to time you can spread out a little bit and it means someone can sit here and read, the kids can sit around the dinette and play some board games and stuff like that, it just creates that flexible opportunity inside the camper trailer itself. This along with the dinette can of course be converted into a bed to increase your accommodation options so there's a whole heap of flexible things that happen inside these camper trailers but I love this lounge area. Now one little improvement that's happened recently I think with the 2024 models is that the GPO outlet just down here on the opposite side of the bench now has USB outlets. So you've got one GPO, two USB outlets which makes your functionality a lot better in these camp trailers as well. Again a lot of us in the previous years have gone and fitted USB outlets here and there but having that built in from the factory is really handy now, you don't have to make any modifications on the run and you can quick and easily plug in and charge all your phones, devices and stuff like that using the USB outlets. So that to me is a big tick on the box as well. Now if you've been following me for a while you'll know I'm a huge fan of these buffet units at the front door of the camp trailers and some of the caravans as well. Our Swan has a buffet and our Journey that we've updated to also has a buffet unit and I think these are a really really good thing in this layout of camper trailer. 
Now obviously if you go the Eagle or the Lark, which are a similar configuration, this gets dropped off because the body gets a little bit shorter. But one thing to note that if you are looking to accommodate an extra child or to use some extra bedding where we convert the lounges and dinettes down, is that in the Eagle, the dinette in behind me here is actually slightly longer. So if you've got a little bit more room that you need to consume, maybe you do consider an Eagle because you can convert that down to a slightly longer bed. But one thing you will notice in the 2024 range is that the push buttons are generally no longer to the cabinets inside the camper trailers. You now have these pull-up handles which have been in the Jayco caravans for quite some time and to me they're a lot more robust and easier to use. So that's actually a really good update that a lot of people will appreciate. The laminates are all pretty much the same as what they were in the previous years with the grey sort of beige colour scheme. Curtains all pretty much the same. One thing I have noticed is with the car key canvas is that it's a little bit darker in here which I think a lot of people appreciate early in the mornings. It just closes it down that little bit so you're not woken up. If you've got kids sleeping in one of the bed ends and stuff like that, that's one of the common things that do get asked in all the Jayco camper trailer groups. And obviously if you've got the bed flies optioned and you've got them out, that darkens the bed ends down a little bit more if you just want to not be woken up so early in the morning. And I really like this textured fabric that's in this display model. It's got a lot more of a thickness to it and I think it will wear really well as opposed to the more flat fabrics that you've had of the past. The camper still comes standard with the three-way fridge, which I have no dramas with at all. They're extremely efficient on gas and when you're camping off grid, you don't have to worry about having a really big battery system. But you can still option these up with a compressor fridge as well as a lithium battery upgrade under the bench seat here and solar on the roof to make you fully sustainable off-grid particularly if you option in the hot water system that comes with a 12 volt water pump as part of that package as well. If you're planning on staying just in caravan parks you might need to option all that off-grid gear in and remember you still have the touring models as well. But otherwise it's all pretty much the same in here other than the updated fabric treatments and of course these pull handles which make a huge difference. Now while we've just touched on the Swan as part of this video, one of the other really exciting updates is with the Lark package. While you used to have the Lark Touring and Bush Pack, the Bush Pack has now been updated to the full Outback spec. So that means you get the much larger chassis on it, you get the independent suspension, and all the other bits and pieces that go with the Outback models that the Bush Pack didn't necessarily get. So for me, that's a really big upgrade. So if anyone's interested, I'm sure we could do a bit of a review on some of the other camper trailers or even caravans here at JK Newcastle. And I thank them once again for giving us access to do this. They've opened up on a Sunday to let me in here and they've helped out quite a lot in organising all of this. Anyway, I better get going. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, like and share the video around and put a few comments down below on what you think about the new green colour scheme, the new front and rear treatments, including all the updates that have been done over the last few years. It will help everyone out in the community that's doing their research on these camper trailers. But anyway, I thank you all for watching. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.